So this is not going to be a super revelatory video, but I have never used cryo hops and I actually have had these for the better part of a year now. I got them at Homebrew Con last year, which was 10 months ago. They've just been in the freezer. Now I've heard that this is the powder, whereas now it's more of a pelletized powder. I've not, not used any of it, and I thought if I was ever going to use it, I would use it as a dry hop technique and just see what happened. I have a hoppy lager that's very similar to a India Pale lager. It's basically the same type of thing. I'm just calling it a hoppy lager just to change it up a bit. But I'm going to put this in to the secondary um, for a few days, maybe, and then I'm going to keg it off. And then I'm going to try to keep the this powder as much as possible out of the packaged beer. I have a couple ideas on how I might do that. So today I'm going to cut this thing open and take a smell and take a look and dump it into the secondary and we'll go from there. So maybe I'll just kind of keep it rolling here. See if we can go ahead and... Let's see here. We got the got the mouse. We got the uh, the hot package. I'm gonna cut this baby open here. Vacuum sealed. Ooh, there's some. Take a look at this business. Oh, that smells unreal. I don't know if you um if I can get it to focus. It's um. Just like uh, hash powder, hop powder, dust. Um, so yeah, I can see how they would have pelletized it maybe for ease of use. I'm assuming that laurel is a type of hop, I, I guess. It's, um, it's just really nicely, freshly pungent um, hop smelling. So yeah, I'm going to dump this in. I don't think I have to do a video of trying to dump this into the mouth of the carboy, but I am thought about putting it into a bag, getting some sanitized marbles or something and doing that, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this ride fast and loose, and then what I'll do is try to see if it either drops out or if I can rack the beer from below it, and then I'm probably going to put a bag over the tube that's going to be in the keg, and if any of this stuff gets through, I'll hopefully I can catch it in the bag. We'll see what happens. Alright guys, I am going to keg this cryo hop beer. It's been three days. I don't want to give it a ton of time. This is what this thing is looking like right now. I've had it covered and it's been in the closet, but as you can see, there's, uh, so it's up here because I've been swirling the whole carboy gently pretty much every day, but it, as you can see, there's definitely some powder still on the top. You know, I haven't looked, but I would assume some of it has also settled to the bottom. So I'm, and actually as I look, I can see it suspended in the beer as well. So. I don't want that in the packaged beer if possible. So I have a hot bag. I think I might get another hot bag. I'm gonna double bag it and it's gonna go on the end of the tube that will be in the keg. So that means surely this stuff will be getting through the racking cane, through the tubing, into the keg, but hopefully the double hot bags We'll keep it in the bag so that when I pull that all out, it will keep it out of the keg. We'll be tasting it today, and I'll smell it and taste it today. But then, of course, once it's carbonated, we'll do a tasting, and we'll see if there is a decent hop aroma from this powder. And hopefully not any kind of a grassy flavor from any powder that is in the packaged beer itself. So you can definitely see a layer of the hops that is settled above the yeast 
and you know a lot of it some of it's still clinging to the carboy but now I'm not seeing it on the top so as I've kind of noticed this before once you start racking if you have pellet hops or apparently this powder on the top it will kind of work itself down out of suspension or at least out of being on the top not out of suspension the sample tastes pretty good there's some hop aroma it does taste a little grassy to me so now I just pulled it out with the wine thief so I didn't take it this in this case it might be the hot bags might be catching some of it or most of it from going into the beer but we'll definitely give this a taste and see how it comes out it is May 2nd and I wanted to do a check-in on the cryo hop dry hop because it has been in the keg for a week and it is this one and this is my India Pale Lager um, it is clear the India Pale Lager is definitely clear and slightly more carbonated but I wanted to check on the Hoppy Lager cryo hop one now to see if I can note how it changes maybe in a month so let's see and I'm comparing it to this one that had no dry hops only hop stand wow that's kinda of funny initial quick test I think I get more hop aroma off this that could be because this one is more carbonated I did get a little bit of a hop aroma off of this one when it was just freshly kegged and I was kind of just kind of getting into it. I'm not really getting a lot of hop aroma, to be honest. I'm going to do a swirl on this one. I think I get more hop aroma off this. Now, why would that be besides the carbonation? is having so this one has been in the keg for a month and a week so five weeks let's say some hop aroma still great juicy hop flavor tangerine grapefruit melon uh, good malt character the other thing I haven't commented yet is a aspect of the flavor of this one that I was getting. Let's see what we get today. And I, you know, I so the aroma I was getting is something that is said to be part of the laurel hop, and I was getting like what I was calling a lemon pledge, kind of a lemony, citrusy, clean, sparkly kind of aroma. For whatever reason, not getting that right now. A lot of grapefruit in the taste. The grapefruit may or may not be part of the laurel dry hop, which is described as floral, citrus, peppery, lemon citrus, dark fruit. I thought I was getting some peppery flavors, aromas rather, before too. Now one thing that I'm getting less of now, which I didn't like in this beer, is what I call a grassy flavor, which I feel like I get sometimes when I dry hop beers, and that's why I went through some effort to try to keep the hop powder out of the packaged beer. I'm not sure if I succeeded entirely or if that's just sort of a result of just the flavor that gets in the beer when you dry hop it in that manner that you can't filter out with a couple of hot bags. So, yeah, it's, I'm getting, now I'm getting a little more of that grassiness. I forget the top, top of my head, the hops that I used in this one. I know that they're noted. I'm going to pause, be right back. So there is Comet, Pilgrim, and Amarillo, and the Pilgrim is earlier, but more towards the end is this um, Pilgrim, and it says lemon, berry, spicy, 
So maybe some of the flavor is from the late editions of this Pilgrim Hop, which I'm not familiar with. But at this point, if I'm comparing these two, the clarity notwithstanding, because that's, as we know today, neither here nor there. I mean, I'm kind of basically going for a clear India Pale Lager, so I, I like it when it gets clear. But this, what I call the Bird versus Fish IPL, which I have a video on making this beer. I think it's a better beer. I think it drinks better. I think it's more rounded. It's more enjoyable. It's a little bit higher in alcohol, which could be good or bad. I think it's 7.5-ish, and this one's 6.7-ish. So... What I hope to do is get at least one other person, maybe a couple other people will drink this hoppy lager with the dry hop in two weeks, three weeks or so, and we'll see how it is at that point. But I wanted to document some of these impressions at this point. So far, I would say the dry hop is not really doing anything that I prefer over not dry hopping. That's kind of been my uh, bias in this non-scientific experimental process, but let's see how this beer is in a few more weeks. So it definitely gives off lemon. That's why it's called Laurel. It's lemon and floral. Here we are. There's two of us. We got two beers. It's been two weeks since the tasting I did solo. Chip has helped me out today to either confirm or deny my own personal suspicions and biases and tastings. Now, for fun, what we're doing is we are tasting the Hoppy Lager next to the India Pale Lager, which is now two and a half months old. Um, the Hoppy Lager is now a month and a half old. So yeah, the India Pale Lager is a month older. And we were talking before we got rolling here, but why don't you go ahead and give your thoughts and then... I'll follow. I just thought aromatically, the hoppy lager has some lemon and some kind of herbal things going on. I wouldn't say like discreet flavors of things like sage and um, oregano, but the beginning hints of those kind of green leafy herbs. Definitely lemony, sage but the oregano. laurel is what I have been led to believe is supposed to be very lemony. So it's not surprising that I get lemon peel, candied lemon. Um, you made the point though that it it doesn't jump out of the glass at you like you would think something that's been dry hopped and if that's the purpose of dry hop yeah. I seem to I feel like dry hop also is a flavor component but first and foremost it should be yeah aroma right and we've all drank beers that you crack the bottle or the can and commercial beers and you're just hit with tons yeah, of wonderful yeah, yeah. awesome hop rum so that it certainly certainly this. is possible there's you gotta swirl this up to there's kind of ways get that to put the hops during active fermentation now is a thing people do mm -hmm. also uh you know different dry hop charges several charges i mean there's a lot of ways to load up i did i think it was i forget if it was one ounce of the dust and that's sort of like equivalent to i think two ounces of regular hops i think is kind of what I remember. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Can't pay attention because I'm on that. I personally, and I am trying, I don't get yeah. any hop aroma off the hoppy lager really at all. All of those things you were discussing. You just don't get it. I'm not going to say you're wrong. We all have different senses. I don't, I don't even get it, and I'm trying. you got to beat it up, though. I mean, you have to swirl it to, like, high foam in order for anything. So, I'm not saying... I agree before that it's all malt. All dry hopping is a waste of your hops. I'm certainly not saying that. I'm not saying that the cryo genre is ineffective. I'm not saying that either. All I'm saying is this. Now you'll never get your sponsorship. This three month old, almost three month, two and a half month old India Pale Lager for me is thrown off more hop aroma. It's a cleaner tasting beer. It's a, it's a nicer beer. So that is just kind of my preferred way of doing it. The other thing that I get off the hoppy lager that I don't like, that I think I attribute to the dust, is a what I call a grassy green hop 
kind of flavor as if there's a as if there's dust hop dust in there that I'm drinking I mean it's just not a flavor that I like oh, I've gotten that before when I've dry hopped that IPO is so good it's pretty good <laughs> which is a I mean it is funny right that a lager that's that old that's hop focused and has that much age on it is still like I mean you almost want to hope that this gets better with age yeah <laughs> somehow it, it and, and clear it's not clear either yeah the the that's what I I'm happy with the IPLs. They always drink good, like after like three weeks old, if you keg them, they drink good, and then they drink good till the keg is gone. It's never getting worse when the keg yeah. is gone. I mean, I did Dawson's Neck Tat. Um, well, bad weather, coincidentally, brewed a, a big batch and gave out carboys of it, and I dry hopped mine with that laurel, and I'm getting a lot of that same kind of like just lemony flower almost like sticking your nose into like okay. a lilac bush and maybe it's just not the best hop to dry hop with that honestly. could be that could be um, possibly and i did only do it could, three days i could see it being a boil it. hop for like a blonde i didn't do it a long time a pale ale better than dry hopping something just high alcohol anyway for what it's worth this is my little one-time experience using the the dust uh, I think I... You need a key? I think I'll just keep not dry hopping for now. If I ever make a New England IPA again, then of course I would. That's definitely part of that style. It's it's needed, I think, and for several reasons. But otherwise, I'm, you guys, y'all can dry hop. I'm going to do a hop stand. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I am pro anti dry hop. <laughs> Alright then. I mean, not 100%. <laughs> I have dry hopped a couple of beers, but... I haven't had the best experience with them. Yeah. Thankfully, when it worked out, it worked out really well. But yeah, sure. That's I, probably a component of what the beer is overall, I've rather had some. than just the technique. And when I've made a Furious, early Furious clone, and I made a Plenty of the Elder, those are dry hop. They were great for four weeks, six weeks, and then they started started getting worse. And I attribute it to the dry hop because when I don't dry hop, if ale or lager. And I do these hop stands, they're good for They stay consistent at least. Yeah. Like they may not be better yeah, worse, maybe they, but it's the beer you may, think you're gonna get yeah. the whole time it's on. So that's it. Chop for chop. Down down for, for down. Down. Mm. Bachelor pad. Catch you later. Bachelor pad. Kicking it in the basement. Oh yeah.